Be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, our God, in your plan of salvation for us, you healed the leper. Cleanse our bodies and our souls from every sin in thought and in deed, and sanctify our spirits with your Holy Spirit. May we glorify you with purity and holiness and give thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the eternal Word, who took flesh and became like us in all things but sin, to the Creator of all who appeared in the world as a physician and healed the sick in body and in soul. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. O Christ, our God, physicians of souls and of bodies, in your plan of salvation you had pity on the leper who was outcast and you healed him by your word. We lift up our eyes and our hearts to you at all times, and we implore you never to keep your mercy and grace from us, but to look upon us with compassion as you once did with a leper. Cleanse us and make us holy. Now, O Lord, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to stretch forth your right hand and have compassion upon us. For you have said, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened to you. With unfailing hope, we implore you to forgive all our sins in your love and heal us in all of your grace. Accept those who repent and bring back those who have gone astray. Console the grieving and strengthen the weak. Satisfy the hungry and provide for those in need. Bless those who are generous and enrich them with all good deeds. Remember the departed who have gone to their rest hoping in you. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever.
heavenly physician, after you healed the leper, you told him to go and to show himself to the priest and make an offering. Now with the fragrance of this incense, we offer ourselves to you as an offering pleasing to you. In your mercy, accept it from us and protect us. We glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Christ our Lord, our physician, you have made the leper clean. Now we beg you to heal us. By your word, forgive our sins. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and to children forever. Brothers and sisters, therefore, sin must not reign over your mortal bodies so that you obey their desires. And do not present the parts of your bodies to sin as weapons for wickedness, but present yourselves to God as raised from the dead to life, and the parts of your bodies to God as weapons for righteousness. For sin is not to have any power over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? Of course not. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are the slaves of the one you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God, that although you were once slaves to sin, you have become obedient from the heart to the pattern of teaching to which you were entrusted. Freed from sin, you have become slaves 
of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of the weakness of your nature. For just as you presented the parts of your bodies as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness for lawlessness, so now present them as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free from righteousness. But what profit did you get then from things of which you saw that you are now ashamed of? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit that you will have leads to sanctification and its end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise be to God always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint Mark, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Mark writes, And rising very early before dawn, Jesus left and he went to a deserted place where he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him came after him. And on finding him, they said, Everyone is looking for you. And he told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. And a leper came up to him and kneeling down before him, begged him and said, if you desire, you can make me clean. And moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, he touched him, and he said to him, I do will it, be made clean. And the leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. This is the truth, peace be with you.
If you desire, you can make me clean. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. There seems to be a bit of an editorial discrepancy between what we have in the lectionary and what you have in the bulletin. The bulletin's right. Because it cuts off, it end, it's ending abruptly by saying he sends him away sternly. Now, there's a reason why our Lord does this, but he does more than that. He sends him away to say, you go and show yourself to the priest and have the offering made as commanded by Moses. Because he's meant to fulfill the law, to go. So what the Mosaic law required is if someone who had had these skin conditions, this leprosy, had been clean, they had to go in order to be able to come back into human society. Because before that, they had to remain outside. And they were required to announce their presence if people came. They ring a bell. <clears throat> and so the sternness is not that our Lord's being mean to them. The sternness is that he's violated the law of Moses. He's come into this village to see the rabbi. So he's violated the law of Moses. So he's sternly, he's rebuked. But he's also healed. Our Lord does have love for him to do this. But at the same time, you, know, you violate the law of Moses. So fulfill the law of Moses now, now that you're clean, and go and testify to the priest. They certify you. You offer your, your sacrifice in thanksgiving, and you'll be back in human concourse once again. That's the story. It's very simple. But of course, what our Lord is doing here is the very beginning of the Gospel of St. Mark. This is interspersed with miracles, the healing of the, of the mother-in-law of Peter, and of the calling of the apostles, bringing them into his inner circle to ultimately they first become disciples. They come to learn from this rabbi. But the next stage is he's going to give them things to do, which is when he says, now you go into the villages and you prepare, and this is where I'm going to be preaching. Because this is the reason why I came to teach, to illuminate minds, to bring grace. And then all of a sudden in front of you, you have this man who's deformed and probably missing members of his body from the leprosy. And it's a shock to everyone who's there because he's, as I said, he's not supposed to be there. And so our Lord heals, but in the Gospel of St. Luke that recounts this, the episode that will follow immediately is the healing of the paralytic. And we'll have that gospel a couple weeks from now, or yeah, a couple weeks from now. And there our Lord makes it clear, your sins are forgiven you. Here he just heals the man's body because of his faith, prostrating before our Lord. If you choose to do this, it's an act of faith. I know you can clean me. I know you can make me whole. I know you can heal me. This is a repentance and a conversion. It's a recognition that I'm not as I meant to be whole and entire and healthy. And so while the story is being recounted, of course, for the fathers of the church, this story is about sin ultimately. The paralytic will make that clear. But in this case, it's really about our whole process of what we call conversion. The conversion process is turning toward. It's not just once I was not baptized, now I'm baptized. Yes, that's a conversion. But it's not the only form of conversion. Conversion is a lifelong process. If you read the biography, the autobiography of St. Teresa of Avila, she'll talk about her conversion after being in the convent for 10 years. She wasn't a bad nun, but she talks about her conversion. Now she becomes a seriously profound nun. This whole movement of turning towards the Lord. It's why we have the great fast. It's a moment for us to stop and seriously think about our lives. And not about being wicked or evil or sinful and all that, but sin is wounds. Sin is unhealthy. Sin is distortion in our lives. So we're not looking, this leper is not evil. He does violate the law of Moses and he is rebuked for it. But he's not evil in the sense of somehow being degenerate. But he is unhealthy. Sin doesn't mean that we are evil. Sin means that we tend towards evil because it's an easier path usually. And that usually is more conducive to our own intrinsic self-centeredness, if not selfishness sometimes. But it doesn't mean we're wicked. 
It just means we're wounded. Remember, the word sin in the Saxon just means mistake. And what Lent is, is to stop for a moment and to say, and to look in my heart of hearts and my life, and to say, where should I be? If I was whole and if I was healthy entirely, what should my life look like at this point? with all the occasions and all the graces and all the inspirations that God has given me throughout my life over decades. Not where I'm at saying I'm good enough, but to saying where should I be at this point? This is why St. Like Francis of Assisi at the end of his life could say, I am the most sinful of all men. He's not saying I'm wicked and degenerate and demonic, but he's saying I know in my heart of hearts all of those graces, all of the inspirations God has given me during my life that I did not follow. That I can know. The other wounded people around me, the other people on the earth, I don't know. I don't know what they've done. So I know that I have certainly violated the goodness of God who's tried to raise me up over these years. And I've kept shaking him off and yanking my arms out and saying, no, I'll do it myself. Or it doesn't matter, I don't have to do that. I don't need to do that much. It's the child that's always like, no, no, no. And God keeps going, come on, I'm going to show you how to do, no. And we do this our whole life. And Lent is the moment to stop and say, how much of a supernatural spiritual brat have I been? That's the recognition of leprosy, that I'm wounded. And that's why during the season of Lent, the church has always required us at least once a year to go to confession. Now, for Maronites, until fairly recently in our history, we used to be required minimally to go to confession three times a year. Because we come before the sacrament. And it is kneeling before our Lord and saying, I know that if you choose you can make me whole. And that's why I remember the beauty of this episode is our Lord touches this mutilated man. The sacrament of penance is the moment where the eternal, infinite, compassionate one touches us personally. Throughout our anaphoras, we have the whole idea, we are sinful, we ask for compassion, we ask for mercy. It's always coming up in our prayers. They're very beautiful. And yes, that's our general sense of standing before the great God of goodness, that we are in need of mercy. But that's a general and a public stance of the church, if you like. The sacrament of penance gives me the surety that when our Lord touches us in the sacred mystery, to say, yes, I do choose this, you, individually, be made clean. When we leave the Mass, some of our sins may be forgiven, some of them are not. We're distracted depending upon our disposition. And so sins are forgiven during the Eucharist, that's clear, depending upon how I personally am disposed. But when I am in the sacrament of the mystery of penance, I know that when I leave that confessional, that I am clean. I know that with a certitude and a faith that I can't possibly have, even in the beauty of the divine Eucharist. That's why the sacrament of penance is distinct. That's why it exists. And for the fathers of the church, they interpret this leper coming because it requires, we have to recognize our contrition. We recognize where we are or where we are not and where we should be in our lives. Those sins of omission, things that I didn't do, but I should have done. They are also mistakes. They are also sins. And so that when we go first is that recognition, and this leper certainly is aware of the fact that I am I'm sick, I'm not healthy. When we look at the hysteria around coronavirus, this becomes insane. Yesterday morning, the morning sentinel, two complete pages on this flu. This is becoming neurotic. I mean, yes, be concerned. There is one benefit coming out, hopefully. There's a lot of people who are learning how to properly wash their hands. And this is good. I don't think that's the purpose of all this kind of hysteria around it, but okay, fine. You know, we die from lots of things. 
When we recognize our leprosy and we go before the merciful one and we ask for that healing, we're whole. Whether my body dies today or dies in 35 years, it doesn't really make any difference. What makes the difference is whether I am whole before the compassionate one, whether I'm healed, and not neurotically worrying about physical death, whether we're all going to receive at some point. And so anyways, that's just an aside, of which I do many, I know. But when we recognize that's the first stage for us to go, and when the second is that conf what we call also the sacrament of confession, that we go to the Lord and we present ourselves and we say, this is how I am unclean. That's confession. That's the second stage, second part of the mystery. Is this the recognition that I'm sick, but I know that I can leave here healthy? And that's why the third part of the mystery is my resolution. My desire is to be healthy. And so the three parts are contrition. I recognize where I'm at or where I should be, what I haven't done, what I have done wrongly, and then announcing it to our Lord so that that hand of the divine Messiah can touch me and say within that mystery, it is my desire, I will this, that you be made clean. Now in many of the apostolic churches, they just simply organize a number of evenings where they're going to have confession during Lent, and everyone just comes. Priest stands in front of the conostasis, and everyone just comes up one after the other. This is what they do. They make their confession to our Lord's icon. They kneel down next to the priest. He puts the stole on their head, gives them the words of absolution, and they will do that minimally each, once a year, to come to be healed before the Feast of the Resurrection. But the resolution is that third part in which we resolve to actually follow the prescriptions, to do the therapy I'm supposed to do. How many doctors and nurses I have known over the years who complain about these incorrigible patients who whine and cry because they're sick, but they don't follow the prescriptions and the therapy that they're supposed to do. Makes you want to walk out of the room and say, well, suit yourself, just die. But you don't, because you're a physician and your purpose is to heal. Any more than the priest just looks at someone and saying, you know, your life is really a mess. So just go ahead and die in eternity. No, the priest doesn't do that either. You wait, you solicit, you petition, you encourage, and then you wait some more. And that's our Lord walking through the village. He knows this leper's coming. And so in that resolution to follow the prescription sets us on that path again, which is conversion. We keep turning toward the Lord. We fall on our butts. We go to the great and divine rabbi. I know that if you choose this, you can make me clean. That's the mystery of penance. It's the second of the healing mysteries. So a couple weeks ago, we talked about the sacrament of anointing, extreme unction. And so in this case, this is what I am healed during my life and continually during my life. So we leave you with that one last detail of this man. <clears throat> when our Lord sends him away, you go to the priest and you don't tell anyone about this. You just go to the priest and have the sacrifice offered. So right, so remember the physician, they don't really listen to me, they're not doing what I'm asking them to do for their own good. And we're told in the gospel what the man does is he goes out and he starts telling everyone about what happened. We're not told whether he actually does go to Jerusalem and see the priest. We're just told he just ignores after this because he is so exuberant at being clean and whole now that he starts telling everyone about it. And we're told in the Gospel of St. Mark, and it's in your bulletin, that our Lord couldn't go into any of the villages now, which was the purpose why he came through Galilee was to teach in the synagogues. He can't because the crowds are massive. Because this man telling everyone how he was made whole. That is the exuberance of the healthy Catholic who knows that grace transforms their life. They tell everyone how magnificent it is. How many people have told me 
about God bless her, our beloved Teresa who died years ago, how she told everyone about St. Joseph's, how she told everyone about how much she loved her faith, and how many people were touched by that. That is the leper who knows they've been healed. I know that light shines in my light. I know that I have been made whole. You, you can also discover and find this. That's the apostolic aspect which comes from being made whole. But of course, it inconvenienced our Lord's life because now he's swamped. And we're told the last line, he had to go out into the deserted areas again, where the apostles first find him at the beginning of the story. And then St. Mark finishes off by saying, and everyone came out there to find him. You want to fill the church? We need to be cleaned. We need to approach our Lord in the sacred heart and recognize that uncleanness in the mysteries. And then the resolution to walk the path of therapy and healing in grace. And then you tell every manor that you meet that God is alive and radiating mercy and healing in Waterville. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. <clears throat> One God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not to be, consubstantial of the Father. Telvot madem he daloho, walvot aloho dam hade taliunt, wainem silvo taivu to heo lel by toch vestudem, haye clod good
Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, Saint Domina, and Saint Achikaya. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. to the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. O Father, God of peace and Lord of security, make us worthy to embrace one another with a sincere kiss in the spirit of your unending love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. Peace to you, holy altar of God. Peace. 
to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. receive your blessings and assistance for we are weak and you are the support and refuge of all we raise glory to you to your only son and to your holy spirit now and forever Amen. O lord may the light of your face shine upon us deliver us from every evil and blot out all our transgressions that we may raise glory and thanks to you to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your Spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify and exalt you, O maker of all creation. With the angels we glorify you, and with voices of praise we cry out and we proclaim. You sent your Son into the world, and he became flesh of the Virgin Mary for our salvation. <speaking in Hebrew> Waxoya bertal mi dao kado mar, Saba khulam mehne kulhu, Ono teni tao, Pakhru dil, Dakhlo faikun wakhlo sagiye, Me tefaseo me tihem, Khusoyon, Hame wa khayin al khalam al min. al koso dam zikh bo men hamro wo men mayo. Arakh kade. 
ca del talmita o ca romana, sabishta o amene kulho, hono denita, de mohodil di antiki khdato, nahlov paiku, wahlov sagie, mete shedu meti. Khusun haume wa khayi dal qalam almin He then commanded them and instructed them saying Each time you celebrate these holy mysteries you remember my death and resurrection until I come again we remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Lord, we remember your coming that saved us. And as we await your second coming, we offer you praise and ask you. On the day when you will judge the righteous and sinners, do not condemn us because of our sins, but have compassion and mercy upon us. Turn your holy face away from our sins and assist us. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father. as we your sinful children receive your graces we thank you for them and because of them we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we profess our faith in you and we ask you have compassion on us O God have mercy on us and heal us how awesome is this moment O my beloved for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Since he may make this bread the body of Christ our God. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God. Amen. May those who share in these holy mysteries be cleansed body and soul from every sin and receive eternal life. Lord, accept our intercessions and our prayers, and grant security to your people and peace to your flock. Protect our shepherds, Francis the Pope of Rome, Bashar Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, and Gregory John, our Bishop. Assist the priests, the deacons, and all those who serve your Holy Church, so that they may intercede and pray to you on our behalf. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, those who have asked us to pray for them, those who are desired but when able, were unable to make an offering, and those who assist your holy church. Be a shelter and a refuge for them, for you are the Savior of all. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the civil leaders in our country and throughout the world. Enlighten their consciences to bring security and peace to your people. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, your holy church that you established on the solid rock of the true faith 
and send her vocations to the holy priesthood and religious life. In a world of distractions, which pull us away from properly loving you and our neighbor, may those whom you have called to serve your holy church respond to you and have the courage to follow your will. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the Holy Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin, and all the saints. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy of their reward. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the righteous fathers and teachers who have gone to their rest among the saints. Remember those who diligently carried your gospel throughout the whole world and confirmed your holy church in the true faith. Assist us through their prayers and strengthen us in your love. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our parents, brothers and sisters, teachers, and all the faithful departed here and everywhere who have gone to their rest. Forgive us and forgive them of all sins and offenses. To our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. And rest, O thou, until the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without Knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that we, your blessed name, may be glorified in us and in all things. But the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. God the Father, you strengthen and encourage us, for we are weak. We implore you to purify us from every sin and to accept our offering, so that in one spirit we may call upon you, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for sure. Amen. O Lord, lead us not into the trials of temptation that we do not have the strength to overcome but deliver us from every evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, 
with your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing of the Lord. O Lord, bless your worshipers who bow before you and implore you. Make them worthy of your mercy and forgive all their sins, for you are almighty and rich in compassion. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy mind, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for a new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
Spirit, the living blood to drink. Love of all people, have mercy. We thank you, O Father, for this gift that you have given us, though we are unworthy. Do not shame us because of our sins, but help and save us, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. And with your Spirit. Lord Jesus, stretch forth your right hand and bless your people. Protect them by your holy cross. Be their shelter and refuge, and perfect them with your abundant blessings, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your blessed Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.